<laughs> this is actually kind of the first time I've been honest. Besides being honest, you know, my attorneys. Even that, I haven't been completely honest with them. So. Did she warp your personality? Did she warp your mind? Did she warp your moral compass? Yes. And through my life, yes. She taught me how to be a good liar. A very good liar without any conscience. With my mother, I could lie and think nothing of it. I love him so much, but maybe he can get help now. I'm trying to silent ways. Who talked to him? your mother? I did. Did you help? No, sir. Nichols, your mom? No, sir. Did you have knowledge that Nichols was going to kill your mom? Yes, sir. Before he did it? Yes, sir. I talked him into it. It just was good to be honest. Gypsy Rose Blanchard is finally tasting the freedom she's long dreamed of. After spending nearly nine years in prison for helping plot the murder of her own mother, Gypsy, a victim of her mother's psychological disorder, commonly known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Since childhood, Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee, portrayed her daughter as frail, disabled, suffering from multiple illnesses, including leukemia and muscular dystrophy, subjecting the girl to life in a wheelchair, a feeding tube, and unnecessary surgeries. In 2015, Gypsy says she reached a breaking point and plotted with a boyfriend she met online, Nicholas Godijan, to kill her mother. Gypsy would later plead guilty to second degree murder. Godijan was convicted of carrying out the stabbing death and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. During her prison stay, public fascination with Gypsy exploded. Her story portrayed in multiple documentaries and a drama series, The Act. I'm so trapped. And I can't tell anyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you are tuning in. This is Unapologetically Me featuring me. No special guest, just me. Hello everyone, how are you guys doing today? I am trying to get back on a schedule here where every Friday we will have a new upload like it used to be back in the day. This case I just couldn't avoid and I tried to, but I just couldn't. I had too many opinions on it. And you guys, you know how I am <laughs> about my opinions. You'd have to be living under a rock if you haven't at least heard about the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, especially since her release from prison this past December. Leave it to America to glorify criminals and make them mainstream sensations. Anyway, I'm gonna get straight into my reason for hopping on the proverbial bandwagon that even channels that don't usually cover crime cases are swarming to jump on. If you're a current sub of mine, like I said earlier, you already know that I'm gonna bring a controversial twist to this story. If I didn't have something different to offer to a story, I wouldn't cover it. It's that simple. I was going back and forth in my mind about even covering this case at all. Seems like everywhere you look though, whether it be YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, even mainstream media and private networks like Hulu and Lifetime, you're seeing the story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I certainly didn't want to be another one considering that there are so many other cases out there. So why did I end up deciding to research this case further in order to actually create a video about it, right? Well, I've known about this case for some time now. When it was first blowing up years ago, I saw the documentaries and more recently, I even watched that Hulu show titled The Act. I had always been fascinated by it, as many people have been. Whether you're a true crime lover or not, it's hard to ignore this story. And when I started seeing videos popping up about Gypsy and her prison release, I really didn't consider making a video on it. To be completely honest, I didn't really understand why everyone was making such a huge deal about her release from prison at all. Because at the end of the day, she did a horrible thing. 
And while I can understand what she did and why she felt she had to do it, I obviously can't come on the internet and condone taking anyone's life, whether or not we feel they deserve it. It's just not my place to decide whether or not someone lives or dies. Now, don't get me wrong. If it's self-defense, that's a whole other ballgame. But I do think that some people have the true definition of murder and self-defense confused in regards to this case. And while we're not going to get into that right now, we will get into it at the end. What we are going to get into right now is Gypsy Rose Blanchard in particular. What she went through, what she did, and what she is currently up to now that she is free for the very first time in her life. Because after watching interviews and videos of Gypsy talking about the case and telling her story on multiple platforms, I just get a weird feeling. Like I can't quite put my finger on it and I know I can't be the only one. Maybe some of you can relate. There is just something very, for the lack of a better term, unapologetic about the way she speaks about what she did. I just can't shake it. Right away, after leaving prison, she gets some shoes, she hops on TikTok and travels to all these places, taking selfies and seeming to really not just enjoy her freedom, but she seems to be enjoying her fame and the attention a lot. But before you begin to assume where I am going with this, just bear with me while I take you on a journey into my mind when it comes to the story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. As always, this video is entirely my opinion on my understanding of the facts in regards to this case. You should always do your own research before forming your own opinion. I do appreciate you listening to a different opinion. All right, you guys, let's do this. Nicholas Godijan, Gypsy Rose's boyfriend at the time and partner in crime, received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Gypsy Rose Blanchard, however, received a 10-year prison sentence and was paroled after just eight years in prison for her quote-unquote part in the murder of her mother, her motive being extreme abuse for years and years by said mother. Now, I think it goes without saying that we have more than enough evidence backing Gypsy Rose's claims of abuse by her mother, Claudine Didi Blanchard. There's absolutely no question that Gypsy Rose Blanchard was subjected to years and years of psychological and physical abuse at a level that most people cannot even comprehend. Why did Gypsy's mother do this to her? Claudine, or Dee Dee Blanchard, more than likely had a mental illness known as Munchausen's syndrome by proxy, which of course went completely under the radar and was never actually diagnosed while she was alive. The legal definition of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, or Munchausen's by proxy, is a psychological disorder marked by attention-seeking behavior by a caregiver through those who are in their care. And I'm going to just call it MSP because I, I can't spit that out every time I'm going to use it in the next few minutes, okay? So... MSP is a relatively rare behavioral disorder. It affects a primary caretaker, oftentimes the mother. The person with MSP gains attention by seeking medical help for exaggerated or made up symptoms of a child in their care. As healthcare providers strive to identify what's causing the child's symptoms, the deliberate actions of the parent or caretaker can often make the symptoms worse. The person with MSP does not seem to be motivated by a desire for any type of material gain, usually. However, in this particular case, we know that both Dee Dee and Gypsy gained an abundance of things by keeping up the facade of how sick Gypsy was. The caregiver often appears to be very loving and caring and extremely distraught over their child's illness, which was also the case here. People with MSP may create or exaggerate a child's symptoms in several Several ways. They may simply lie about symptoms, alter test results, such as contaminating a urine sample, falsifying medical records, or they may actually induce symptoms through various means, such as poisoning, suffocating, starving, and causing infection. Sometimes the person with MSP may even be a healthcare professional themselves. And we do know that Dee Dee went to nursing school for a time. 
It is not exactly known what causes Munchausen syndrome by proxy, but researchers are looking at the roles of biological and psychological factors in its development. This is my educational part of my videos, okay? You guys have been following me for a long time. There's always some education. If I'm learning it, you're gonna learn about it because I had to learn about it <laughs> and I wanna share that with you. Some theories suggest that a history of abuse or neglect as a child or the early loss of a parent may be factors in its development. Some evidence suggests that major stress, such as marital problems, can also trigger MSP. My first question about the Gypsy Rose case was always, what caused Dee Dee Blanchard to develop Munchausen syndrome by proxy in the first place? We could all assume that Dee Dee's mental illness really set off when Gypsy was in a motorcycle crash because this is when Dee Dee first forced Gypsy to be confined to a wheelchair and never allowed Gypsy to not be in that wheelchair ever since. But the first incidents may actually have been when Gypsy was just three months old. Dee Dee brought Gypsy to a doctor claiming that she believed that Gypsy had sleep apnea though the doctor found nothing to suggest that this was true. Gypsy herself stated in court during questioning that she knew from the very beginning she did not need the wheelchair. And when asked why she believed that, Gypsy simply said, quote, because I could walk, unquote. Was there a time between when you first were put in a wheelchair in June of 2015 that you figured out that you really didn't need to be in a wheelchair? Yes. When was that? I always knew that I didn't need the wheelchair. And how did you know that? Because I could walk. This is Aurora, Missouri. I am about to dive off our porch into the pile of snow. You ready? Gypsy was just nine years old at the time she was confined to this wheelchair and she knew she didn't need it, but she did as she was told. And she continued to do as she was told by her mother for years, despite knowing that it was a lie. This is where many people are conflicted. Why didn't Gypsy ever tell anyone? I mean, really, all she ever had to do was just stand up in front of people and they would have immediately seen that something was going on with Dee Dee. But it's never that simple in these cases. Gypsy believed that no one would believe her because her mother told her so. Even telling Gypsy that she had gone to the police and told them that her daughter was mentally ill. So if Gypsy ever came to them, they should immediately get her back home to Dee Dee. And Dee Dee told Gypsy that the police agreed to do this. Dee Dee also went to great lengths to falsify documents and records always keeping Gypsy under the age of a legal adult for as long as she could, using Hurricane Katrina as the biggest opportunity to create a new full file of medical records for Gypsy Rose. And if anyone questioned her about why she didn't have certain proof, she simply said that everything was lost in Katrina, including Gypsy's birth certificate. Dee Dee had full control of Gypsy, physically, medically, and psychologically. I do have to say, that when Gypsy says that she believed she couldn't say anything, I believe her. I also believe that Gypsy will be punished in ways that a normal person would never comprehend. If and when she didn't follow the script that her mother fed her, or when she would question her mother on why they were continuing to lie to people. Of course, we also know that for a long time, Gypsy did actually believe that she was sick. She believed she had leukemia and thought she was dying. My mother would often tell other people and tell me that I would only have a life expectancy of seven, and then it was 15, um, and then it was 20. Gypsy was also extremely isolated, and Dee Dee saw to it that Gypsy only knew what Dee Dee wanted her to know, and that was in regards to everything. But eventually, this would change. As a child, Gypsy would often dream about being a princess, wishing for a fairy tale ending for herself. And as Gypsy got older, she began to fantasize about a Prince Charming who would come and rescue her. Her first opportunity for this to happen was in 2011, when Gypsy was 19 years old. She had met a young man at a sci-fi convention, 
by the name of Dan and she was smitten. This was the first and only time that Gypsy attempted to run away from her abusive and controlling mother. However, just four hours later, Dee Dee found Gypsy and told Dan that Gypsy was a minor, that she was just 15 years old, showing him altered identification for Gypsy. Not only was this extremely mortifying for Gypsy, but when they arrived back home, she was severely punished. She was chained up with handcuffs and attached to her mother with a dog leash for two weeks. Gypsy describes the events here. I was in the middle of the night and I packed a small bag of stuff. My mother was asleep, so I left the house and I met up with one of my friends. And at some point, did your mom figure out where you were? Yes, sir. And when was that? Four hours later. What happened when your mother figured out where you were? She took me back home. She smashed my computer and my cell phone. She chained me to a bed for two weeks. As I was saying before, Gypsy was a girly girl that just wanted to be someone's princess. The one Disney movie that really stuck out to her was one called Tangled, where a girl is held captive in a tower, completely isolated by her mother, who only really kept her there for her own selfish gain, yet said it was a mother's love and that it was to protect her from the evils of the outside world. As Gypsy developed more into a woman, her hormones would eventually get the best of her and she could no longer keep her urge to be in love with her prince any longer. She was in her 20s. She began sneaking her mother's laptop at night while Dee Dee was asleep and eventually Gypsy joined a Christian dating site online where she would finally meet who she believed was her prince charming yet again. In October of 2012, Gypsy began talking to a young man by the name of Nicholas Godejan. Though Nick was a couple years older than Gypsy physically, mentally, one could argue that he was nowhere near up to par with Gypsy Rose Blanchard, intellectually. Nicholas Godejan was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder while in grade school and was in special education classes throughout all of his schooling. He was isolated and socially awkward with a goal of becoming a computer repair technician, though he lacked the mental capacity to keep up with the schooling for it. In fact, Nicholas Godejan had an IQ of somewhere between 74 and 82, depending on who you get the information from, which means that he had the mental capacity of around a 10 to 13 year old boy. So even though he was two years older than Gypsy at the time, which was 25 years old, mentally, he was still a child. He has autism, you know, he okay. Asperger's. And that's Has he been diagnosed with autism yeah. and, and yes. Asperger's? Yes. Okay. Last doctor he talked to, they said his mind is probably always going to be 15, 16, right around there. Which, in my opinion, probably why they got along. Because even though Gypsy was also an adult, and I consider her to be very smart, she had been forced into acting like a child, much younger than she really was for years. Because Nicholas was unemployed, a majority of his time was spent online. And he was also very interested in BDSM. He started talking about something called BDSM. I didn't know what it was, so I looked it up. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, <laughs> look it up. Aside from being autistic, Nicholas also believed that he had a dissociative identity disorder. One of his identities was a very evil man, a part of Nick who was always angry and longed to do very dark things, such as rape and kill. I remember seeing one night, it was at nine o'clock at night time, I was in my grandma's house. I just remember looking in the mirror and I saw a glimpse of something I didn't recognize in my eye. It just, it was just a shape. And it went away. It was almost like something was trying to tell me, oh yeah, I'm there. Ah, uh, you've created me. I'm there. A quote, dark shadow, unquote, that Nick had kept himself from exploring up until he was with Gypsy. Why did he wait? 
he was terrified of this quote unquote dark shadow that he believed was inside of him. I knew there was a darker part of me and I didn't, and I was actually quite terrified to actually explore it. I was a terrified explorer. And now I actually regret exploring it with Gypsy. She's the one I, I, I hoped I would be brave enough to actually explore it with me just so I, so I understand um, what's inside. But who that is, what that is. I, I wanted to know, so this way I know what I'll be dealing with. That, that dark shadow part of me that really is triggered by anger. It's triggered by anger. The sweet, uh, innocent me that I, I usually wake up to every day is not there. It, it's a completely different person. This personality is allegedly the one who Nick had murder, Dee Dee. And the personality who had sex with Ruby immediately following Dee Dee's murder. Who is Ruby, you ask? Well, I wasn't there, but there are text messages that show that Nick wasn't the only one who took on other personas in their relationship. Gypsy too had a few alter egos that she would become for Nick in order to please his sexual fantasies. I don't know how much he told you about me, but there's actually multiple personalities of myself. Have you been diagnosed with that? I probably should be diagnosed with it because it has happened. The thing is, I used to take a medication. Okay. I used to hear voices in my head. Okay. And it went away, then it somehow went as part of myself. Okay. So, does Gypsy know that? Yes. Okay. She does know that. Okay. There were four different personalities that Gypsy made up. One was evil, one was highly sexual, one was mature, and one was a little girl. And that's not even the point. The point I'm trying to get at is that Gypsy played roles for Nicholas where she would dress up as different people. She had wigs and personalities that would appease Nicholas's sexual fantasies. This was one of the ways that Gypsy could be in control. So I made up some individual personalities to match his other personalities. Let me just take a second to ask you a question. It's just a question. Do you believe that sex can be used as a manipulation tactic? Some of you right away may be saying no, and that's probably because you hold value to sex. But many of you, even though you hold value to sex, can still use your heads and say, yes, sex can be used to manipulate someone. We can talk about the obvious forms of this, such as for money, when we think of OnlyFans and escorting, prostitution. And we can even say that there are women and men out there, I don't want to be one-sided here, that will withhold sex from their partner unless certain expectations are met. Or, on the other hand, offer up sex if certain expectations are met. I don't want to go off on a tangent here. I'm just trying to explain my opinion when I say I believe that sex can be used to manipulate someone, especially someone that is obsessed with it and has been for years. Someone like Nicholas Godijan. In fact, before the crime of murder, Nicholas had a prior run-in with the law where he was caught pleasuring himself in a McDonald's parking lot for something like eight or nine hours, and he was arrested for indecent exposure. So I think to say that Nick could be manipulated sexually, in my opinion, would be fair. It's pretty evident by the things that both of them have said through text messages leading up to the murder that their relationship was extremely sexual. During the time you and Nick were together, did you ever engage in fantasies or role playing or anything like that? Yes. Did you have names? Yes. Tell us about the names you utilize. Ruby, Candy, Kitty, Bella, Demona. Why did you have different alter egos? I made them up because he told me that he had various alter egos. And so I created mine to fit the ones with his. And who came up with your names? I did. And do they each represent a different type of person? Yes. Who is Demona? She's a character that I came up with. And what was the character? She's half werewolf and half human. Who is Kitty? She's like a childlike girl. Ruby? She's 
my evil side. What about Phoebe? She's more of the slutty side of me. Did you also have wigs? Yes. Why did you have wigs? To change the different hair colors of the characters and because I didn't have any hair at the time. The mere thought of Nick getting to be physical with Gypsy drove him crazy with desire. And she knew this. Unlike Nick, who had the mental state of a boy beginning puberty, Gypsy was smart. Gypsy is smart. Nicholas Godijan could never have pulled this murder off without her, in my opinion. Nicholas had no reason to kill Dee Dee other than because Gypsy asked him to. Did Gypsy know that you were going to kill her mother? Um... Honestly, she asked me to. Okay. So, so Gypsy knew you were going to do it because Gypsy asked you to. Yes. And how did Gypsy ask you to do that? Did she ask you to do that in a text message, on a Facebook, or in person, or something different? Well, it was more than once. I mean, you had uh, uh, Facebook. Um, we, we would talk about it on there. We would talk about it even on Texas. Okay. I, the only reason I did it is because I did it for me and her. That's the real reason I did it. I would have never did it if it was not for me and her. Okay. So you wouldn't have done it if somebody else would have asked? No. Okay. There's no way I would have did it for anyone else. Okay. So you just I did. truly do worship her to the point that sometimes I want to do it for her. Okay. Okay. Well, I think you've proved that, right? Yes. I think that you've proved that. that you Besides sexual conversations, Gypsy would tell Nick about all of the things that Dee Dee did to her and was still doing to her. Gypsy needed to be saved from her evil mother. Probably about a year into our relationship, I just couldn't lie to him anymore. And I just told him everything. It really didn't come up like, I want you to kill her. But he had said, I'll protect you from anybody. And I said, anybody? And he said, yeah. And I said, even my mom? And he said, yeah. And that's where it kind of developed from there on. Nick fell in love with Gypsy very fast between his maturity level and strong desire for a woman's touch, love, and attention. Gypsy filled every void in Nick's life. She was the missing puzzle piece that he had been obsessing over his whole life and would do anything to be with her as he states here in court. You said it before in the statements, it's very much the truth, so I'll just say it again. When this whole thing happened, all I ever really wanted to be was with this good Blanchard. That's all I ever wanted to be. I've never known what it was like to have a mother to love. I've never known what it's like to have a female connection. I've never known any of that. None of it. Because I've never known it as part of the reason why I strive so hard to get it so much to the point where I don't even understand what it even feels like to have a female connection. It's missing. It's a missing link. It's always been a missing link. It's always been one. And that's the reason why I guess when I got so deep into this situation where I fell in love so deeply, they do say, and they've always said it, love is blind. They've always said that. Well, I admit it was blind in love. That was always very much the case. It was always that way. Nick would eventually ask for an interview to have his voice heard after years of watching Gypsy gain a following from telling her side of the story. During this interview, he would say that he had only known the bad side of Dee Dee at the time of the murder because that's all Gypsy had ever told him about. It wasn't until after the murder took place that Gypsy would reminisce about the good times she shared with her mother to Nick. After hearing these things, Nick grew more and more remorseful. Listening to his very first interview after their arrest, you can get a glimpse into Nicholas Godijan's mind and his love for Gypsy. Because the thing was is that she wanted to do it herself, but she was too, uh, what's the word, uh, not, not cautious, it's, uh, I guess skittish is the word. I want to actually do it. Okay. Why didn't you kill your mother? I didn't believe I could do it. Could you explain what you mean by that? I don't like blood. I don't like the sight of blood. Frankly, I'm too squeamish, so I just honestly didn't believe I could do it on my own. He says several times that he worships Gypsy. He would do anything for her and only her. No, 
Okay. There's no way I would have did it for anyone else. Okay, so you just did. I truly do worship her to the point that there's nothing I want to do for her. So, do you want to um, do the right thing by Gypsy if you love her? Well, the truth is I worship her. So I know you there's do. No way, there's no way I wouldn't do it on her. I know. I would think for her. I know you do. I believe you do. But this is the point where you're going to prove whether you do or not, okay? We mean you talk. Okay. Okay? Because it's not fair. It's not fair to Gypsy for her to be honest and you to, to, you to lie, okay? Okay. Um, so when you came here to Springfield, that was your purpose to come here so that way you could do that for Gypsy? Yes, because I wanted to be with her and I okay. wanted... So did Gypsy know you was coming here then to go ahead and kill Dee? Yes. Okay. Uh, so why did you guys decide that you would stab her instead of shooting her with a gun or poisoning her? Honestly, uh, the thing is, is we really wouldn't have known how to poison her. Honestly, we wouldn't have known how to. Okay. Um, I mean, she looked up multiple times of how to do it, how to do it, because she wanted to find the quickest way to do it. Okay, so like she looked up on the internet, yes. like how to kill her mom? Yes. Okay. And so she was looking for the easiest way to do it? Yes, the okay. way she would be in less pain. She wanted okay. her mom's death to be quick. And so how did you get the knife? Like where'd the knife come from? Did yeah. you bring it with you from here? No, no. Okay. Did you buy it somewhere? She bought it for me. Who bought it for you? Uh, Gypsy. Where'd she buy it from? Online. She bought it online? Oh, wait. No, 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 no. It was not online. I gotta get that straight. It's not Yeah, online. don't lie because you don't want to get Gypsy in trouble for something because you're going to lie about it. I, I know. Okay. I know. Uh, she somehow found a way to get one uh, at Walmart. I don't know how she did, but she did. So when you got... So you didn't bring a knife from here? No. So when you got here, she had a knife? Yeah. So did she know you was going to stab her? Yes. And the purpose of this video was to show Nick the layout so that when he got there that night and was going to kill her mom, that he knew exactly where to go in order to do it. But the part about this video that is extremely disturbing and the part that everyone is talking about is that when Gypsy gets to the bed to show where her mom would be laying, she motions like this. Did she scream or holler? Or... Yeah, she did. What was she saying? Uh... First she said help, and then she didn't know, she didn't recognize who I was, and she okay. said, who are you, and then... She said, who are you? Yeah. Okay, and she didn't recognize who you are, and she says help, and then what does she say? And then she called up for Gypsy, but Gypsy didn't do anything. Okay. She hollered for Gypsy? Yes. And did she holler for Gypsy once, twice, five times? Three times. Three times? And what was she saying? Can you tell me how she said it? Um, she pretty much yelped it. Yelped it? Yes, she's like, Gypsy! Okay. Yeah, she was loud. When, where was Gypsy at when you were stabbing her? When you were stabbing Dee in the bed, where was Gypsy at? She was uh, hiding in the uh, bathroom. Okay. Why was she in the bathroom? Why was she hiding in the bathroom? Because uh, she didn't know if uh, her mom was going to kill me or not. Oh, okay. So she thought mom might kill you. Yes. Okay. Did she think mom had a weapon or? Um, uh, she didn't believe I could actually do it. That's what I think it was. Yeah, like she had confidence in you? Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, yeah. She didn't think I was okay. capable of it. What what, it who, whose decision was it for her to go in the bathroom while this was happening? Um, she said that, that that's what her she wanted to do. Okay. So I, I just let her do it. And okay. she locked the door behind herself. Okay, so she went in the bathroom, locked the door, and, and you went to do yeah. whatever you were doing. Do you remember, did Gypsy ever come out and see her mom? Uh, I wouldn't let her. You wouldn't let her go in there and see her? I didn't want her to be trying to You You stabbed me in the bed, and Gypsy's in the bathroom, and so what happens after you're done stabbing D? I uh, knocked on the door, and I also scratched on the door <coughs> twice to let her know that was me instead of her mom. Oh, so is that a code you guys came up yeah. with? Okay, so what was the code again? It was t three knocks and then two scratches. Okay, three knocks, two scratches. And yeah. then that was so that way she would know in the bathroom. That, it was, that was so Gypsy would know that it was you and not her mom. Yep. Okay. And did you guys plan that out before? Uh, we, like I said, we went back and forth between more than one idea, but that would end up being the one that we sticked with. Okay. Okay. After that happens, after you do the three knocks and the two scratches, does she open the door? 
Uh, not right away. Okay, what happens? She wanted to shave uh, her private part okay. and uh, her legs. Okay, she wanted to shave her private part and her legs? Yes, for me. Okay. Um, so how did you know she wanted to do that for you? Um, uh, because uh, she, uh, well, she did it. Okay. That's how it's kind of... What did you do while like, she's shaving her legs and stuff? I waited for her. Okay. And then she gets out of the bathroom? Is her legs shaved and everything's yes. shaved? And then yeah. what happens? And then, uh, we, uh, set to clean up, uh, the ground and everything around. Okay. Clean uh, up, what do you clean in the house? Uh, yes. You're, like, vacuuming and dusting and stuff like that? Uh, cleaning up, uh, such as, uh, anything that has memories of her. That's actually what we were doing. I don't understand. I'm sorry. Like, anything that had, uh, uh, I mean, she took uh, some pictures away, and she actually threw them in the trash. She, okay. She tried to get rid of things that would uh, give you guys the idea that she really lives there. Oh, okay. Okay, I see what That's you're saying. Yeah, yes. Um, okay, so did, did you guys clean up any blood or anything? Yes. Okay, what kind of blood got cleaned up? I believe it must have been mine because I accidentally stabbed myself in the process. Where'd you stab yourself at? Oh my goodness, do you need stitches or anything? No, I've been holding it. <laughs> okay, okay. But but did, that was an injury from when you stabbed D too? And yeah, then it just got re-injured whenever you... Yeah. Okay, and, and then that other one on your hand right there, that's the cut that you cut yourself? Yep. Yeah. Okay, all right. So when, your guys are, when you and uh, Gypsy are cleaning up the blood, are you helping Gypsy clean up the blood? Or is just Gypsy doing it or just you doing it? Uh, we, uh, for a while, we did it together. Okay. And then... Because she wanted to get it done faster, she did it herself. Okay. Afterward. And what did she do it with? Um, she uh, used a order, uh, uh, what the heck was it? It was like a an, uh, cleaner slash order remover. Okay. Do you remember what kind of bottle it was in? Uh, it was like a reddish bottle. Reddish bottle? Okay. And um, how do you use that to clean? Like, is that a spray? Is that a powder? Is it... Uh, Liquid or? It's a liquid. Okay. She had to pour it down. She pour, where did she pour it down? She poured it on top of wherever the blood was. Okay. And then she would use uh, either uh, paper towel or, uh, she never used any rags, surprisingly. But yeah, that's the main thing she used, was just paper towel. Okay. That or, um, there was also these wipes that she used. Okay. Okay. And so, um, you, she cleans up the mess, the, the blood, that may be yours because you can yeah. cut yourself. Yeah. Um, and then what happens? And then uh, she wanted to have sex with me, so I did. Okay. She wanted to have sex with you? Yes. Okay. And so where'd you guys have sex at? In her bedroom. In? Her bed. Her bed. In yes. uh, Gypsy's bed? Yes. Okay. Um, and... So, you guys have sex? Yes. And what kind of sex? What, what is sex like to you? Well, it... well to me, uh, the, the kind of sex that it was, it was pretty much, uh, although 100% consensual is okay. what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, she, uh, I, obviously I was the one that was in charge, but she went along with it willingly. Okay. Yeah. And so what did you guys do when you had sex? Um. Uh, we pretty much did all three things. We did the anal. We did all of, all of them. Okay. Yeah. So you you had anal sex with her. Yes. And then what's the other? I can't guess. Um. Uh. Oral. Uh. All okay. Of them. Like I said, all of them. Um. Uh. Vaginal. All of them. Okay. Okay. When you say oral, is that you providing oral sex to her and her providing oral sex to you, or both? Is it both. Okay. Both. And that happened in her bed. Yes. Okay. Um. Do you know if this is the first time Gypsy ever had sex? Mm, actually, I do know if it is. Is it or not? It isn't. Okay. So she's had sex before she had sex with you? She's had sex with me. I the one who took her virginity. Oh, so you guys had sex a different time than this? Yes. Oh, when did that happen? It was uh, in a, uh, what the heck was it? It was a theater. In a theater? Yeah. In Springfield or somewhere different? Springfield. Wow, did her mom know? Um, <laughs> we kept it from our mom. Okay. <laughs> Where did you have sex at in the theater? It was in a bathroom. 
Okay, in a girl's bathroom or boy's bathroom? She just took me to the boy's bathroom. I didn't have any choice. I just went right into the boy's bathroom. I guess she's okay with it. Okay, okay. <laughs> was, was that um, a year ago, two years ago? Um, How long ago was that? That was back in March. Back in March of? This year. Oh, okay. So you were in Springfield before. Yep. And did her mom know you were here? Uh, no, I got to meet her mom in person for the first time. And was her mom nice to you? or? Yeah, she was really nice to me. And okay. then, I don't know what it was, but apparently the night got ruined in some way. I, I couldn't, I was trying to understand what was going on with her mom, but okay. I don't know exactly what happened. So did, did you meet her at the theater? Yeah, I did meet her, but I was waiting for, for quite some time before I did. Okay, okay. And then what happened after you guys had sex at the theater? Um, uh, we uh, went to our movie and watched it. And then what happened after the movie? Then I said um, my goodbyes to her. Okay, so you said your goodbyes to her, and yep. then you went your way, and you went yep. back home? How did yep. you get here that time? Um, she got me the money. She gave you money? Yep. How did you get the money? Uh, she sent it in the mail. Okay, so was it cash that she sent you? Yes. Or? Okay, and how much did she send you? Uh, that time I believe it was 400 because she wasn't sharing how much I was going to need. Okay, so she sent you $400. Yeah. And then here's Gypsy's interview with police after they were caught. I'm Detective Ian Cock on the Free Kent Sheriff's Office. How are you today? Good. Good. Doing all right? Good. Good. Well, Gypsy, I'm here and I'm going to get a little bit of information from you. So, um, since this is the first time I've ever met you, okay? Sorry. And your date of birth, Gypsy? Me and my mother are Hurricane Katrina survivors. Okay. And, um, my birth certificate was washed away in Katrina. Okay. And, um, unfortunately, uh, they messed up a long time when they messed up the paperwork and it said 1991, but it's actually 95. Okay. Is that what you get? How old then? Um, I would be a really 19, but on here it's my, um, Medicaid. My medical insurance has 23. Okay. All right. So how old actually are you? Let's get 19. to 19. Okay. I have my mom that lives in Missouri. Okay. And is that it? Or do you have anybody else? Um, does friends count or not really? No, like biological, like okay. brother or sister, siblings, nothing like that. No. Okay. So are you an only child then? Okay. All right. We are here investigating something. So I do need to talk with you about some things. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm thankful because I have no idea why I'm here. Okay. Nobody will tell me anything. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's that's kind of why we're here to kind of help you out with that. Okay. So, do you have a cell phone number? No. No, not at all. Did you have a home phone? Um, my mom's home okay. phone. Okay. Uh, do, do you ever do anything on the computer? Do you ever play games or anything on the computer? Do you ever mess with the computer or anything like that? Um, I don't really have a computer. Okay. No. no. Did, did you ever have a cell phone that you played around on or anything like that? No. Okay. No laptop or no. cable no, no, fire or anything? My mom didn't let me use one because she was like, it's unsafe. So, oh, really? Okay. Oh, was, was, why did she feel like that was unsafe? Um, my mom tended to be overprotective. Okay, does she? Um, yeah. What I've got to talk to you about, um, if, if you're involved in this, you need to tell me that now. Okay. okay. I'm completely 100% okay. honest. And let me, let me talk for just a second, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're involved in this, then you need to be honest with me and you need to tell me now yes, and not sir. wait till later. Do you yes, understand sir. that? Yes, sir. Okay. I want you to understand that, that there's just some things going on um, that you need to be made aware of, and I think that you're aware of. Do you know where you're at right now? Yes. Okay, where are you at right now? Um, I'm at the Waukesha Police Department. Okay. All right. And, how did you, did you lived in Missouri at one point, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you get from Missouri to here? Not about a week ago, um, it was, um, I, well, it all started when um, I met my boyfriend, Nick. Okay. okay. And um, we met on an online dating website. Um, my mom had a laptop, and so I used hers. Okay. I think that you, uh, you know, sometimes you get a bad hand, and I think sometimes that's what's happening with you, okay? Um, and, and I want you to understand that um, you need to be honest with me, and, and if you're involved in anything that I'm about ready to tell you, then you need to tell me, okay? Um, your mom's dead, okay? Now, what I want to ask you Wait, well, is what? Your, your, mom's, your mom's passed away, okay? And she's deceased, all right? Now, what I want to ask you, did you have involvement in this? Okay. 
Hang on, listen to me for just a second, okay? I want you to understand something, okay? Remember the snowball that we talked about? Mm -hmm. Remember the, the pencil that we talked about? I'm going to almost demonstrate something with a pencil here, okay? Look at me. Look at me for just a second, okay? Sometimes people are going along. You know how you got a pencil? You got the lead here and you got the eraser right here, right? Huh. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen a pencil, right? You've used a pencil before, right? Really? Okay. And when you write with a pencil, you write your own story, right? Yeah. Okay. And you take that pencil and you're writing along with your story. Well, sometimes some people make mistakes when they write stuff down, don't they? We've all made mistakes. You've made mistakes. I've made mistakes, right? Yeah. You, ever, you ever made a mistake in your life? Yeah. And I've made mistakes but, in my life. But, 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 and, but, but, hang, hang on just a second. Okay? When, you, when you're writing this stuff down, all of a sudden you make a mistake. Well, what do you do with that mistake? You take that pencil and you flip it over and you start erasing stuff, okay? And you erase it and you recorrect it. And you take that pencil and then you rewrite your history, your story, okay? Uh -huh. And I kind of think that's where you're at with this tonight, okay? Uh -huh. That you have a chance to rewrite your story. And I think that that's what you can do is you can rewrite your story tonight. There's some stuff going on that you, that you and I need to talk about. Uh -huh. And why these things happen, okay? Uh -huh. And that's where we're at with this. You're in a situation where you can help yourself right now, okay? And, and that's what you need to do, okay? You've got to help yourself. We've got to rewrite history. Mm -hmm. We've got to rewrite some things, don't we? Uh -huh. Okay? And I think that's where we're at with all this, right? Uh -huh. What happened with your mom that night? Um, I don't know what happened with my mom at all. Okay, you, just listen to me, okay, sweetheart? You, you know what happened to your mom, okay? You know exactly, I, I, sweetheart, I, I, listen to me. Let's, let's not go down that road. I think you're smart enough to understand where we're at with this, okay? I think you know, and I know that you know, and I know the answer to a lot of these questions, okay? I already know them, okay? I know them, and I'm giving you a chance to be honest with me, okay? Because you don't want this thing to spiral out of control, okay? No, 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 your your boyfriend's in here, okay? Uh -huh. well, he's here. He's, he's in here, mm -hmm. okay? Do you think that we've not talked to people? No, I, 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 I know. Let's, listen to me before you say a whole lot. Do not dig yourself in a bunch of lies. Do you understand me? I understand. I understand. So I, I want to know, okay, mm -hmm. why? 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 Why did you guys hurt your mom? Okay. Wait, so, you would never. Sweetheart, hurt look, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Uh -huh. I've got kids. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for a long time. I know, sir. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand something. Yeah. Don't dig yourself out. Don't go down that path. It's not a path to go down. If, if anything, I, I don't tell lies. Why? Why? Would you like to start from the beginning? The first thing that we need to get out of the way right now is why. You have, you, you know, I've you've got friends. You've got friends that yes. love you. Of course, that I, care know. For you. I know. You, and, you and your mom. Yes. Got friends that care for you. I and know. Help me give them an answer as to why. I have a lot of friends in Missouri. I know that. Okay. And um, I would never hurt my mom. Okay, sweetheart. Like, we're. Do you really want to dig yourself? You're, you're digging yourself deeper. Okay? No, seriously, I would never listen, hurt listen her. Listen to me. Listen to me, okay? I, I don't I don't play around with that, okay? I'm no. not going to play around with this, okay? Sir, I didn't do listen anything. To me. Sir, I have a million questions right now. Okay, and, and you know what? And I'm proud of you for wanting to ask those million questions. And you know what? We can answer those, okay? Okay. But we got to get down to the bottom of why. Okay. Okay. They I, want, they I think want I get things why. very, very clearly. You think that it's me? Why do you think that it's me? I have always listen thought my mom, me. my mom and I are best listen, friends. Listen to me. Listen to me. You know, I think that we've talked to everybody. Sorry. I mean, we, I'm not going to come in here with without having all my things in line. Of okay, I want course. you to understand that. Of course okay. I understand that. And and when we get to the why, then all these other questions I can answer for you. And you're, you're the person that knows the why. You're the only person that knows the why. Do you really want to disappoint your friends? No, of course not. Okay, then but why? May I please speak? I don't even really know what happened. Okay. I, I came here because my mother came out of my house. She and I were having relationship problems. Um, I guess she wanted me to stay a little girl forever. She didn't really like my boyfriend, um, and she was like pretty much um, 
if you want to move to Wisconsin with him, fine, go. And I packed my stuff. Um, she basically wanted me out of the house before then because we kept on having arguments. But I'm not a violent person. I would never, ever hurt her. And, um, and a lot of our arguments stemmed from being with Nick. And so I just basically chose to come here. I gave him money to come here. And um, I said, can you please come pick me up? Because my mom's kicking me out of the house real soon. And that's when he asked his mom, can, can I stay with his mom and him and his stepdad and his little brother? His mom said, fine. So um, anyway, uh, I don't exactly know the exact date he came to Springfield, but I know that I gave him the money to stay at a hotel. And um, anyway, I let him know that. Um, hey, hey, okay. Um, we're, we're going in a totally different direction here, okay? I, you, you listen to me, okay? Let's get back to the why. This investigation is very thorough, okay? Nope. And there's a lot of whys. And mm -hmm. you, you need to answer those whys, okay? My friends know me as a sweet yeah, You're right. And as you're right. Young. But you know what? Sometimes sweet people make mistakes. It's a simple little mistake. My mom. You, if I knew the basic facts of what is going on, um, sweetheart. my friend, my friend had, um, I have, a, um, I do have a phone, but it doesn't call people. I just basically used it for Yahoo messaging app. And, um, one of the people that had texted me, I had texted him that I was leaving home and he texted me and, um, he's like, are you okay? Um, people have been posting some stuff on Facebook and I asked him what post. And unfortunately the police came before I could even read what he was saying. So I guess he was trying to tell me something. Okay. I'm like, Aaliyah's worried about you. Aaliyah? Are you kidding me? Look at me. Look at me. Aaliyah's look at always me. been a bully to me. Okay, but look at me. This time it's a lot different. She's very concerned about you, sweetheart. Very. What about my Aunt Rachel? Why did this happen? I don't know. You do know why it happened, okay? I don't know why it happened. Uh, did she have a heart attack? She was, hey, she was hey, sick. Hey, it could be. We're not, we're not gonna play those games. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> then start being honest with yourself. Okay. And start being honest with me. I go to church. Okay. And I take yeah. communion and I release all of that. Okay. Why don't you tell me why? You, you tell me why, and then I'll tell you why. I don't know why. Yes, you do, sweetheart. You know exactly what's going on. I don't. He is up. I don't know what's going on. Stop that. Let's get out of control. Because I'm, here's. I'm the... just wondering the question you're asking. Why? What happened? Why? Why? Why did I come up here? Why did something happen to my mom? And that's why I'm asking. Was... Why? She had a lot of medical conditions. Okay, this is not a medical condition. You know that. It's not a medical condition at all, okay? Please tell me she did not commit suicide. She okay. she had bipolar. Okay, and it, you were, we're not going to get off on that track. We're not getting off on that track, okay? You know what happened. No, I don't. You, you do know what happened. You were there, okay? Wait, no. Yes, yes you were. You were there. Okay. I told you, okay. you you're, you're leaving stuff out. You know something, and you're afraid. You're scared. I am afraid, and I am Are scared afraid? because I don't know what's so going on. So has somebody threatened you? Um, what do you mean threatened? Hey, but, I do love my mom. I know you do. I know you, sweetheart, I know you love your mom. I have no doubt that you love your mom. <laughs>
I've already talked to people, okay? And right now, he said that he hated my mom, but because my mom didn't want us to be together, she asked me to stay away from him, and I promised her I would. Okay. And then, no, then she just said, well, if you want to go, go. Okay. I guess out of love she did that, because okay. she wanted me to be happy. So why did this happen to your mom? What was the reason for it? All I know is that... Why, why didn't it hurt her? What was his reason behind this? And we're back to that why. I can't see why. He knows I love my mom. He knows that, that she's the most important thing to me. So why do you think he did this to her? He said that it's us against the world and that he's going to protect me no matter what and that we were going to get married and everything and nothing was going to stop us. Good. Even your mom? So he took care of that, didn't he? Um, what do you mean? I don't think he meant ever hurt her. I mean, he's very sweet. He's very kind. Now's the time to be truthful, sweetheart. No more lies. It's because he wanted me to himself. Okay. Because my mom kept me getting in the way of us being together. Sure. She didn't like Nick. Mm -hmm. She didn't want her little baby girl to grow up. She wanted to keep her little baby girl young, didn't she? She, she said that um, <clears throat> there was something dangerous about him. Big, big difference, right? I mean, even here, where Gypsy describes where she is emotionally with all of this now. Is it fair that... He is incarcerated for life, for killing your mom, and you're out? Well, I'm sure that we both have a lot of regrets. All I can really say is that I did my time. He's doing his time for his part. Um, and I wish him well on his journey. And then where Nick is emotionally with all of this now. I always be in my heart. Because she always be in my heart. Everything about her always was stuck with me. I would have done it again. I might have done it differently, but I would have done it again. Due to all the publicity Gypsy's getting, and she's getting me that publicity too, I feel like I have a responsibility. I want to basically let everyone know that I'm not just this cold killer. days of my, my, my life. I mean, that's the only way I can describe it. I, I enjoyed every second of it. From the very beginning, I just knew her so much. Those five days where I was actually with her, physically with her, those five days were the most intense and magical and awe-inspiring inspiring days I've ever had. A little ways down the road, I'd, I'd probably end up marrying her and end up having children with her. To this day, she's the only one that I've ever had that with. Do you see what I mean? I don't think it takes a genius to know the difference in mental capacity between the two, nor the difference between the way they feel about each other now. Nick is still very much in love with Gypsy, and Gypsy, well, I'll let her speak for herself. So this is your happily ever after, the gal who liked being a princess. It is, yeah. I had to kiss a couple frogs to get to this one. Handsome face. Oh, thank you, baby. Kiss a few frogs to find my prince. Wow. <laughs> it's my opinion that after years of watching her mother manipulate and lie and go to great lengths to get what she wanted, the gypsy learned all of this behavior. She was a great actress. She had been acting her whole life. Dee Dee raised her that way. These people are not insane. They are exceedingly calculated. They plan, they hide the behavior. With my mother, I could lie and think nothing of it. Now, don't get me wrong. Gypsy Rose was subjected to a life of abuse and torture at the hands of her mother. 
It is my opinion that once Gypsy realized that her mother would never let her go, that this would be her life until the day she died and survival instinct kicked in. Gypsy would use all the tactics that she learned over her life with Dee Dee to escape this life that would surely end in her own death if she didn't. It is also my opinion that Gypsy did not love Nick, not the way he loved her. She saw him as a way out, maybe not at first, but eventually through talking to him, she realized that she could get him to do anything to protect her. He believed and still believes that he saved Gypsy's life. That was his motive. Gypsy, her body, her love, her affection, and her everlasting loyalty to him. But now, all Nicholas Godijan has left are his memories, his regrets, and life without the possibility of parole. And what does Gypsy have to say about all of this? Do you have any empathy for him being in prison and what he has gone through? Um, you know, I, I think that we both, like him and I, both have a lot of regrets. Um, you know, obviously, I wish that this would have never happened this way. Now, for him specifically, um, you know, I did my time. I know he's doing his time for his part of things. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I hope that whatever he does with his future, because he is spending the rest of his life in prison, I acknowledge that I am the reason for that. However, I don't feel either that it's a situation where it's a sympathetic type of situation. Okay. And I, I mean, the, the reason why I say that is because in my past relationships, I've had two relationships since I've been incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And each one of my exes and even my husband is like, baby, if you would have asked me that question, if you would have said, hey, can you kill my mom to get me out of the situation? They would have said no. She knew right away that I admitted straight out to the whole thing that I was not going to get involved with this no matter how much he tried to push me. It was going to have to be a darker side of me of some form that I have never had the opportunity to explore. I had one thought in my mind out of nowhere appear basically saying take her and run. That was the benevolent thought. Take her and run. As if the kind of feeling that it was I was somehow going to get away with it if I ran away with her. As if somehow we were able to keep her mom at bay better than she was able to in the past when she ran away. However, the other thought came in my mind was that darker part of me was also in love with the darker part of her. I ended up listening to my darker side because I wanted to be with her and I remember what she said and I wanted to believe what she was saying and unfortunately I should have listened to my other part of me as a, ironic as I was trying to influence her to go with but she never went with it. She never wanted to run away. So I couldn't get that to work. Okay, no, we're not doing so that. Let's go to the police. Let's go let's, to the police. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna get you out of this situation, but let's go to the authorities, all right? And and we're going to do this the right way. He did not, Nick did not say that. As a, ironic as I was trying to influence her to go with, but she never went with it. She never wanted to run away. So I couldn't get that to work. You know, he, he has these dark fantasies. He wanted to do it. It was a fantasy he lived out, and he's paying the consequences for that. So with that being said, you know, it's neither here nor there for, in my opinion, what I think of the situation. It's just, it is what it is. That's it. I will say that that response, as you have just seen, is the response she always gives. And I think that it may be scripted as a safe response that was given to her. I'm sure that uh, it's either lawyers behind it or her team behind her, or whatever. But she is definitely sticking to the script that she has done her time and now he's doing his and she wishes him well on his journey. This brings me to her current relationship, her prison marriage to a man by the name of Ryan Anderson, a special education teacher from Louisiana. They have been all over the internet since her release and causing quite the uproar. You guys, I'm here with Gypsy Rose herself, the celeb of the moment. So I know you have so many followers, so much love on social media. But what I want to know is, what do you have to say to the haters? Um, well, you know, can't bring me down. I'm on a high right now. I'm living my best life and y'all can't take that from me. And the D is... 
Whether you love this relationship or hate it, I really don't think it matters because in my opinion, it's not permanent. It's been suggested that Ryan is worried or should be worried that Gypsy's going to leave him now that she's out and quote unquote famous. And I would have to agree with that. Gypsy Rose stated in an interview that she knew two years before her release that she would be paroled. She has stated that she had two years to essentially chew on it and prepare. Had she not been married at the time she was paroled, she would have been made to stay at her dad and stepmom's home. And if she were with Ryan and they were not married, that would have been a three hour drive just to see each other. Gypsy began responding to Ryan because he was from Louisiana. She thought that they would share commonalities because of that. Then after talking over the phone, she says she knew he was the one. So what did Ryan have that Ken didn't have? Who's Ken? Oh, that would be Gypsy's first fiance while she was in prison. The one who she would say broke her heart. Many men write to me in prison. That's how I met Ken. We got engaged in 2019, but it didn't work out. I had so much to learn about relationships. And he left me. And it broke my heart. Now this is just my opinion. Ken is more attractive than Ryan, but Ryan seemed to be a lonely man. He, a bit like Nicholas Godijan, had a harder time meeting and dating women. That, of course, is entirely speculation on my behalf. And the only reason why I'm speculating that is because, I mean, the man wrote to Gypsy Rose Blanchard, who was in prison at the time, for orchestrating the killing of her mother. And many of us who are familiar with this case from the beginning see Gypsy Rose Blanchard as this. This girl with no hair, thick glasses, wheelchair bound, wearing princess dresses, and talking and behaving like a little girl. So I do find it a bit kind of creepy that any man would write to her to begin with. But anyway, that's all I'm saying. That's just my opinion. I'm just speculating that that's why he may have been a very lonely man. He's also established with a career and a home and all the time in the world to care for and love Gypsy the way she wanted and needed. Ryan Anderson offered stability. He was a man that the courts would feel comfortable letting Gypsy out to. In a sense, he was her quote unquote Prince Charming. He was able to rescue her and because of him, she is now able to travel all over the place talking about her love story, gaining her even more attention, which very much reminds me of her life with her mother, Dee Dee. Through manipulation, Dee Dee was able to live years getting attention and profiting off of Gypsy Rose. And in my opinion, it seems the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The only difference is Dee Dee was mentally ill with Munchausen syndrome by proxy, whereas Gypsy was taught. It was a learned behavior. Gypsy was raised to manipulate and lie and she learned that you could get anything you want if you're good at it. Sorry, not sorry, it's the truth. She is continuously saying the phrase, my part, right? I did time for my part. I'm on my own journey for my part. So what was her part? Well, I'll tell you what her part was. Number one, she brought up killing her mother, Dee Dee, to Nick. Number two, she asked Nick to kill her mother, Dee Dee. Number three, she talked about how they could do it which some would say is conspiracy to commit murder. Number four, she looked up ways to poison her mother and shared her findings with Nick. Number five, she paid for all of Nick's transportation by mailing him cash. Number six, she gained access to the murder weapon. We know she got it from Walmart, she stole it. She was the one to get it. Number seven, she provided the murder weapon to Nick immediately before the murder. Number eight, she also provided gloves and duct tape, both used in the murder. Number nine, 
She was the one who even staged the scene to allegedly hide evidence of her living there. Number 10, she cleaned up blood evidence from Nick, who accidentally stabbed himself during the murder. According to Nicholas, she did this because he wasn't doing it fast enough. Number 11, she posted the Facebook post that led to her mother's discovery. Number 12, she played into Nick's twisted fantasies all the way up until the crime took place. She says Nicholas raped her, but in the text messages sent right before the crime, she told him she would allow that. So I don't know. And number 13, it was her idea to mail the murder weapon to Nick's address in order to dispose of it. I don't think I need to go on. You're about to get my point in a second because this is Nicholas Godijan's part. Number one, he fell in love with Gypsy. Number two, he wanted to be with her. Number three, he was told by Gypsy that killing Dee Dee was the only way that that would ever happen, even though he suggested other options to Gypsy, such as running away and faking a pregnancy. Number four, he did as he was told. Number five, he did everything exactly the way Gypsy told him to do it. And number six, he showed up to a fully prepped pre-murder, fully prepared by Gypsy Rose Blanchard and did, quote, the act of the kill, unquote. Because it's always in my comments, like, why are we glorifying a murderer and this and that and the other? And, um, you know, I don't want to have to remind people every single time that I'm not the one that committed the act of the kill. So, you know, I'm a part of it. Right. Unfortunately, Nicholas Godijan's part is the only part that matters at the end of the day in this case. The blood is quite literally on his hands alone. Gypsy Rose made sure of it, even with the Facebook post using Nick's words, quote, the bitch is dead, unquote. Now I brought up conspiracy to commit murder and in some other states, she would have been charged with conspiracy to commit murder or accessory to murder. But in Missouri, according to Gypsy, they didn't have that charge. She says that here. But in the state of Missouri, they, there's no such thing as accessory to murder. So technically, they couldn't charge, they couldn't charge me with accessory because that, that charge doesn't exist. So, I mean, had I been in another state, I would have been charged with accessory to commit murder. Hey, man, I'm on a high right now. I'm living my best life and y'all can't take that from me. Y'all can't take that from me. And the D is fire. But you know what? It's okay because she knows what she did. And when all the celebrity status dust clears, she'll have to think about that. You say all you did was to ask him a question, but in the three days prior to the murder, you had some text exchanges that seemed to me that this plan B was pretty much a collaborative process. And if she has any empathy whatsoever, I would hope that once she realizes that she is ultimately responsible for two lives taken, that she, at the very least, apologizes to Nicholas Godijan for what she has done and is doing to him, which is put the entire responsibility of his part on him as if it were just as much his idea as it was hers. Nick's gonna have to own what he does and you have to own your part of it. Your mother wasn't even on his radar till you put her there. I know. And you have to own that. Because he was the one who performed the quote, act of the kill, unquote, that he is far more guilty than she is. And I'll ask another question. And it's a question that's been asked in many situations before, who's more dangerous? The puppet who commits the act or the puppeteer who pulls all the strings. What's to come for Gypsy Rose Blanchard now? Well, only time will really tell. She certainly has all the support anyone could ever hope for with 8 million followers as I record this. She's even walking the red carpet for her Lifetime series documentary. After a lifetime of thyroid, I finally get to use my voice to share my story and take my truth. As a survivor of relentless child abuse, this docuseries chronicles my quest to expose the hidden parts of my life that have never been revealed until now. 
I really hope that Gypsy gets the help that she needs for all of the trauma that she has been through at the hands of her mother. She is, after all, a victim of years of horrifying abuse, and to think she was rehabilitated in jail is silly. But just because she was a victim doesn't mean she can't also be a villain. My full opinion, Nick deserves a chance to be rehabilitated. He deserves the possibility of parole. If he can be rehabilitated. He has admitted to a very dark side. He used this darkness to commit the crime. And that doesn't just go away, right? But Gypsy brought it out of him. When he told her about it, she came up with a personality to pair with that dark side. Nick had never dared to explore that darkness until Gypsy. He trusted her with that. And I'm no psych pro, <laughs> but I would think that with a lot of therapy, that could be controlled. I mean, I guess the question is, how is he in prison? How is his behavior? Is he violent in there? I don't know. It's just my opinion that he should at least have the chance to have therapy. As I said with Gypsy, to think that he's getting any of the help he needs in prison is just silly. One thing about Nick that he has had ever since the crime took place is remorse and love for Gypsy. As for Gypsy Rose Blanchard, she says that she is in therapy and working through all of her trauma, and that's great. She says she has immense remorse for her part in the crime. But how far does that remorse go? Does it extend to Nicholas? If it does, it may just be that she's been told not to talk about him or their relationship. And if that's the case, I have a feeling that we will hear more about this sometime down the line as she goes through therapy. At least I would expect to hear more about it if the therapy is working. At the beginning of this video, I said that we would talk about those who are calling this a self-defense case. In my opinion, this cannot be considered a murder that was done in self-defense. Just ask yourself, if this were any other DV situation, and someone did this much planning. And then, even though they could have just left in a cab when their boyfriend showed up, they decided to wait until the person was asleep and stab them to death in the back. Would you still consider that self-defense? You said he could have said no, you could have walked out that front door. You called a cab after you hacked her to death, you could have got to call that cab and left. One could just as easily argue that this was a murder for hire, considering that Gypsy sent and provided all sorts of money to Nicholas, and once they were caught, all of a sudden, she cuts him off. What all did you pay for? I paid for the Greyhound bus ticket, I paid for the hotel, and for eating money. And how did you pay for this? How did you get the money so that, to get? I stole the money from my mother, and I said to him, sent it to him via the mail. In what form was the money? Cash. Do you know how much you sent that time? Probably about $800. Again, I didn't think he had enough money. And how did you get money to him to come down on that trip? I stole money from my mother and I sent it to him via the mail. Do you have any idea exactly how much money you sent to Nick? Over $1,000. Are you aware that he spent any of his money on either of these two trips? No, sir. Did Nick have a knife that was used in the murder? I supplied the knife. Where did you get the knife? I stole it from Walmart. And why did you steal it from Walmart? <laughs> because I didn't see a knife that was sufficient enough in our own home. There was also some gloves that have been introduced into evidence. Yes. Where did Nick get the gloves? I supplied them. How did Nick know when to do this crime? The time wise that that morning. I told him. Who planned this murder? I did. I also think it's kind of coincidental that Ryan's license plate says Hitman. All jokes aside, at the moment, it feels as though Gypsy has taken back on the role of celebrity status, this time with the entire world's support. This is actually very comfortable to her. This is how she grew up. Nowhere near as big of a celebrity back then as she is now, but she still grew up doing interviews, having cameras around, getting lots of attention, and small town fame. The only difference this time is that she is the one profiting off of her experience now not 
her mentally ill mother. That's all I have to say on that. I will talk to you guys on the next one. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, all that. It's free. It's a free way to support the channel. And if you're feeling extra generous, I got the cash app. We got super thanks. We got all that. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, your weekend. As always, be safe, be healthy, be happy, and most of all, be unapologetically you. Bye-bye.